Hello there, my fellow agents of the Dark Gods, and welcome back to some 40k lore. Today we're gonna resume our coverage of the infamous Logician's Chaos Cult. It's actually been quite a while since I made that first video on the Logicians, even though from your perspective it's probably a lot less. My point being is that I actually found the Logicians to be one of the most original and unique takes on a Chaos Cult as they are actually quite well organized and blend together multiple aspects of a Chaos Faction. Thus, today, as we return to them, we're gonna learn more about their agents, as well as about an infamous conflict called the Meritech Wars. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Where possible, the Logician Cult prides itself on directly employing only the best of its agents, and beneath the Tektrarchs, the cult cells are made up of skilled organizers and administrators, as well as specialists like pilots, scribes, financiers, and information brokers. Many of these operate under a variety of cover identities to ensure that the bidding of their Tektrarch is carried out. The ranks of the Logician Cells are rounded out by a hardcore of professionally trained killers or soldiers, all of the highest caliber and thoroughly tested for competency, ruthlessness, and loyalty to the cause. These militant agents are one of the most marked features of the entire heretical cult, as their skill and efficiency sets them apart many of the enemies that the Imperials have to face when dealing with insurrection, criminal gangs, or cult zealots. Highly motivated, tactically skilled, and well equipped, the cult agents of the Logicians have repeatedly proven to be the bane of an unsuspecting enforcer group or an ill-prepared Inquisition task force, whenever the cult has been encountered. In the more recent decades, the Logician cult in the Calixis sector has been repeatedly linked to a shadowy organization of assassins, primarily operating in the Jusian Reach area of the sector. Intelligence gathered by the efforts of Inquisitor Srax Raim has indicated that the assassin cadre known as the Ashen Tear is actually just a cult within a cult of the logicians themselves. The Ashen Tear project was created to give the cult a purpose-built resource of living weapons, with which it could strike directly at its enemies, removing with surgical precision any individual obstacle in the path of the cult, or deal with anyone that would betray it. In structure, the Ashen Tear appears much like an Imperial Death Cult, somewhat of an imitation of the Great Official Assassinorum itself. Its killers are selected from a young age and put through a grueling physical and psychological conditioning, harsh enough that very few are actually likely to survive to attain majority. As fitting the Logician's doctrines, those that graduate to active service are further augmented with numerous discrete implanted cybernetic and alchemical systems to boost their abilities, making them incredibly dangerous combatants and highly adept stealth killers. While few in number, the Ashen Tear Assassins represent a new and powerful weapon in the arsenal of the Logicians. Although some, like the infamous Moritat Reaper Esme Blackheart of Inquisitor Srax Raim's retinue, have taken great delight in besting these faithless pretenders when encountered. The logicians are somewhat of an elite force as heretical cults go, made up of professional agents and adherents chosen for their degree of ability, ruthlessness, and loyalty above all else. The Logicians' doctrines place their faith in the superiority of technology and skill and favor specialization in their servants. Additionally, the cult seeks to increase its forces with a variety of disposable lackeys who may be entirely unaware of who they truly work for. They make extensive use of servitors, including the combat types and cyber creatures, where appropriate to its needs and resources. For their most secret intrigues and most dangerous covert operations, the logicians employ covert agents who have been specifically psycho-conditioned, alchemically enhanced, and mind-wiped of everything but their loyalty, their mission, and what their masters wish them to know. The logicians maintain a few of these specialists for their more delicate infiltration procedures. They refer to them as crucible agents, referencing the burning away of their old personalities and identities to create a mentally empty state needed so they can be filled with the cult's purpose. 
Out of all the logician forces, it is these agents that fill some inquisitorial factions with the direst suspicion. As, aside from the holy orders themselves and the higher powers of the more militant adepta, few in the Imperium have the skill or resources to create such exquisitely empty-minded living tools. The logicians also count among their ranks a small number of renegade tech priests. These rare individuals are often skilled and experienced members of the Adeptus Mechanicus, who have, for one reason or another, rebelled against their masters. The life expectancy of such unlicensed and outlawed adepts is short, and many are forced to flee into the underworld in the hopes of evading the wrath of their brothers. For the most radical of these, the logician's offer of protection and resources in return for their service is a small enough price to pay for survival. A few human lives lost here and there are entirely irrelevant. Without contest, the greatest danger that the logicians ever posed to the Calixis sector was during the Meridek Wars, which threatened to destabilize both the Calixis and the Ixaniat sectors between 211 and 226 M41. The Maratis Cluster is a grouping of a dozen barely habitable planets caught in the empty void of space between the two sectors, claimed fully by neither and considered more trouble than it's worth. The stellar cluster was dominated by the scavenging Meritek clans, void-born families who maintained ramshackle caravan fleets which plied the space between the sectors, going on mining, trading, salvaging, and fighting off attacks by corsairs and orcs as best they could. Over the years, these clans grew stronger and began to monopolize much of the border trade between the two sectors, and the size and sophistication of their fleets grew to be a serious concern to the local authorities. Unfortunately, other crises and events at the time were more important, and the problem was left to fester. It finally came to a head when a Battlefleet Calixis patrol squadron of frigates pursuing pirates in the cluster were ambushed. All but one of the frigates were destroyed by clan warships. The Marathi's uprising had begun as the clans wanted to secede from imperial rule. The Merite clans quickly took an aggressive stance and launched dozens of raids and strikes deep into both sectors, causing widespread panic and discord. Their vessels were small, but their advanced jamming systems and compact but powerful weapons made them more than a match for their imperial navy counterparts. In addition, their boarding parties were made up of heavily cyber-augmented shock troopers which could smash through the Imperial opposition with ease. For a time, the entire Calixis sector reeled at the shock of the Meridek assault, and several planets threatened to fall into civil war as the rumors of rebellion were spreading. While the powers of the Ixaniat sector bickered and withdrew to defend their own border, a newly enthroned sector governess took charge in Calixis. With the backing of the Calixian Conclave of the Inquisition, she rallied the defenders with merciless intent, purging the lucid court on Scintilla of dissenters and rivals in just one night. Her plan, rather than fruitlessly chasing a hundred different threats, was to simply and mercilessly strike a blow from which the enemy couldn't recover. And so, Regis Sectora Myram Harvala, in what is remembered to this day as the Proclamation of Scant Mercy, ordered the Sector Battlefleet to mass into an armored fist, and then smash directly into the heart of the Marathi's cluster. With the might of her armies pouring in from behind, no pity, quarter, or mercy was given to anyone found there. As the 17-year-long purge of the cluster went on, inquisitorial investigation revealed that the logicians had been both the instigators of the crisis and the suppliers of the clan's newfound technology. It appeared that they viewed this war, which had already cost millions of lives, as nothing more than a set of field trials. The logicians had maneuvered their conspirators into highly placed positions in the logistical effort behind the Imperial response, seeking to profit from whichever outcome would follow. The wrath of the Inquisition was terrible, and in conjunction with the Mechanicus faction known as the Divine Light of Solex, they systematically hunted down and destroyed the logician influence on Hive Tarsus on Scintilla, on Feng's World, and dozens of other commercial operations and military vessels. In the latter stages, much of the Marathi's cluster was laid waste to, as the Imperial Navy hounded the remnants of the Meritek clans and their logician masters deep into the Ixaniat sector, 
causing a major diplomatic accident and conjuring up the specter of intersector war. Fortunately, the Calixian Conclave called upon the seat of the Inquisition in the Segmentum to intervene, and all was well. In the aftermath of the Meritech Wars, it seemed that the power of the logicians in the Calixis sector was broken. And so it would stay for at least several centuries. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the logicians' heretical cult, and at least one of their grand machinations for today. I will also be making a third and final episode on these fellows, where I'm gonna tell you some stories about their exploits and conspiracies. I've also been considering the idea of joining some of these mini-series into just one longer video, as long as it's just on one topic. So while we're gonna have three episodes on the logicians, for example, at some point I'd like to join them into just one 30 to 40 minute episode. Anyway, as always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on the logician's cult in the comments below. If you found this informative, do consider leaving a like, share, and subscribe for future content. Thanks for watching to the end, and the Emperor protects.